Hello and welcome back to the Prehistoric Aquarium. As you can see, I've been busy building off camera yet again and honestly having a really great time doing it. I'm loving how like the sun kind of shines into this new enclosure. Hopefully gonna start filling soon. But first things first, I finished our next tank, which should hold our marine cartilaginous fishes, some of our early sharks. These are really neat, so I'm really looking forward to showing you them. So I've been referring to these animals as early sharks, but this first animal looks nothing like a shark. It's called Balancey, it has big fins, big goofy teeth, and it belongs to a beautifully named group, the Petalodontiforms. And for years we only had fossils of those big goofy teeth until full body fossils were found in the Bear Gulch limestone in Montana, which is also a lager stat, which we mentioned last time, is a location where you find really well preserved fossils. And these teeth that I keep going on about, which they've recreated here perfectly, were used mainly to graze on things like bryozoa and sponges. I think there's actually a few sponges added in the mud, which we can just kind of throw around for them. There we go, you can sort of picture them <laughs> chewing away on these. Next up is an animal called Squatonictus. They're a little bit more what you'd expect from a cartilaginous fish. They look a bit like a, um, like a skate, if you've ever seen one. And again, a perfect reconstruction of them. This is Cladocelishi, and oh my god, they look really good. So these are again super early sharks, more than 350 million years old. Now, fossil sharks, oh sorry, shark fossils suck. Often even the most famous extinct sharks like Megalodon are only known from bits of their teeth, bits of their jaw. But Cladocelishi is very special because we have really great fossils of them, including fossils of their stomach contents. We actually know that they swallowed fish and arthropods whole. So I think in episode two, I said that this mod is perfect for like hipster fossil fish fans. And this is a perfect example of that. Like why include the, you know, really well-known Stacanthus when you can instead add its much smaller, super obscure cousin, which looks like this. So like Stacanthus, they have an anvil shaped fin, the purpose of which is very unclear, which usually ends up meaning that it's a meeting display thing. They're known from a place called Beerston in Scotland, which is where our friend Promissium comes from as well. We find the full body fossils of these things. But yeah, I'm very happy with how this turned out, this strange and obscure marine shark tank. I think it needs some more lights though. Oh wait, no, hold on, I actually forgot one. It was in the wrong box, I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> okay, ignore what I just said. So this thing also goes by the name Godzilla Shark. And when I first heard that name, I thought that could be a red flag. I don't know, it's it's called a Godzilla shark because the fins kind of look like the spines on some of the Godzilla designs. I, I'm not really a Godzilla fan, I don't know the specific era or anything, but with a name like that it kind of sounds like someone was hoping to find a dinosaur fossil but instead found a fish instead. <laughs> it's a cool fossil though, like any Paleozoic fish that isn't just a mush of teeth and scales is obviously a good fossil. But what's really interesting is that this was only published in April this year. So that's cool, this might be one of the most recent discoveries in any of the games that we've looked at. And at last we can move on to the bony fishes, which are the ones that I work on nowadays, so that means they're infinitely better than everything else. So bony fishes are divided into lobe-finned fishes and ray-finned fishes. Lobe-finned fishes are going to go in there, and we've actually only got one ray-fin sadly, and it is an odd choice. So Plady Somes is a ray-finned fish that lived from the Carboniferous to the Permian, yet despite being so old, it doesn't really look too different from most living fish. It has that sort of typical rounded body that we associate with reef fishes, you know, it makes them very maneuverable in those environments. But as someone who works on animals very closely related to this, why? <laughs> It's such a strange and obscure choice, like, I'm not complaining, but even my PhD supervisor, who works directly on this animal, was like, really? <laughs> who would want that in their game? For now, they'll hang out in here, but I really hope we get more ray fins. When this mod gets to adding Mesozoic stem teleosts, please hit me up, I would love to see them added to the game. But for now, yeah, this is just here as an awkward little extra thing, like, <laughs> it's so weird. Why? Alright, still working on the details of this enclosure, but I think it's time we add our lobe-finned fishes. So, like I said earlier, bony fishes are divided into ray-finned fishes and lobe-finned fishes. Now today, lobe-finned fishes are pretty scarce, things like coelacanths and lungfish. But remember, lobe fins also technically include tetrapods, so that's amphibians and reptiles and birds and mammals. But back in the Paleozoic, there were loads more really interesting, you know, what we would classically consider a lobe-finned fish. So for instance, this is Rhizodus, and oh my god, it's huge! Probably one of the biggest lobe fin fishes that ever lived, unless you count, like, 
elephants and whales, technically. I love that fishes are so weird. Anyway, it lived in freshwater environments in the swamps of the Lake Carboniferous, where it ate smaller fish and early amphibians. As did this thing. This is Onycodus. It lived actually in the Lake Devonia, I should say. I don't know if you can see, but it has like a sort of teeth projecting out of the lower jaw because they actually had a tooth wall, very similar to the shark Helicoprion, which I believe we talked about in the Animal Crossing video many, many, many moons ago. But unlike Helicoprion, where we just have this mysterious fossil of a spiral of teeth, this time we actually have a full body fossil to go along with it. We can see how it actually fits into the jaw. And again, this is thanks to the amazing Gogo formation that we mentioned last time. Oh, and we also have Hyneria, that's cool. Again, an awesome predatory lobe fin fish from the Devonian. Something that's really cool about this, so there's a school of paleontology called Histology, where we can well, it usually means putting something like fossil bone under a microscope and studying its microstructure. And in doing this, we found evidence of it having a very low metabolism, which the authors interpreted as evidence of it being an ambush predator, which is really cool, like, that we can make those sort of inferences. Wait, hold on, what's, <laughs> what's going on here? Oh, no, no, <laughs> I know you want to play in the waterfall, but I can literally see you dying. Hold on. Look at them, they're so hell-bent on escaping, the little rascals. 